Hi everyone, welcome to the demo session on Azure Table Storage Service Provider Connector for Logic App Standard. We will have a quick look on the different components of Azure Table Storage, creating a connection through different authentication methods, uh, an overview of different actions available. Uh, we'll go through a detailed demo of uh, connecting to a table storage when it is behind firewall. We'll have a look at different app settings we can configure specific to this connector, and also we'll have a look at some of the troubleshooting options available. Azure Table Storage is a service that stores non-relational structured data, providing a key value store with a schema-less design. It has following components, a table. Table is a collection of entities. Uh, since it is schema-less, a single table can have entities that have different set of properties. An entity is a set of properties. A property is a key value pair. Uh, entity also has uh, three system properties. Uh, one is a timestamp and the second one is a partition key. Entities with the same partition key can be queried more quickly. And a row key. Row key is an unique identifier of an entity. Let's have a look at the table service and storage account and see how we can author a connection from Logic App using different authentication types. Uh, yeah, this is my storage account and uh, yeah, we have table section here under data storage. You can create a new table using the plus symbol here. I have a, a table created already. And to add entities to this, you can go to the storage browser and click on tables. And for this table, we can click on add entity and partition key and row key are the mandatory fields here. Partition key can be common across multiple entities, but row key needs to be unique. And you can add any key value pairs here. So I'll just add name. So this is how we can uh, insert the entities here. So now let's go to Logic App. So, okay, these are the table storage uh, operations available. I can click on any of this. I already have some of the connections created. If I had to create a new connection, I can click on add new here. So there are uh, three authentication types. One is connection string. When you choose connection string authentication type, you can provide the connection uh, string directly from the Azure storage. So for getting that connection string, let me go back to my storage account. And if you click on access keys here, yeah, this is the connection string available. You can click on show and copy this and uh, copy it to the Logic App. So this, once you click on create, this would create a uh, connection for this. Uh, the authentication would not happen at the design time. So even if there is any mistake in the connection string, it may not throw any errors. So uh, uh, we would see any errors only uh, during the runtime. And we have AD OAuth and Managed Identity authentication options as well. So let me check Managed Identity. For Managed Identity, we would have to provide the table storage endpoint. So table name dot table code windows dot net. So let me fetch that from here. Once you click on create, it will create the managed identity authentication. So for managed identity authentication to work, we would have to have a managed identity created here. Uh, let me go back to the logic app again. If you see here in the identity, it had to create a system assigned managed identity. If, yeah, you can click on on here and then it would show up an object ID for this. So for this one, we need to have a role assignment added. Either you can add it here or you can go and add it in the storage account. Let me check. Let me show it at the storage account. So if you go here and uh, look at the access control, you can check the role assignments. So for adding a new role assignment, you can click on add role assignment. 
and choose what role you would like to add. Uh, for performing operations on the storage table, you should either have storage table data contributor or data reader based on the kind of operation you're for, uh, performing. So I'll choose the data contributor. And this is uh, for the managed identity. So I'll choose managed identity and I'll be getting options to choose the logic app for this. So this is a system assigned identity. So let me show you. choose the logic app standard and different logic app standard resources will come up here and I can choose the one. So this is already added, so it might throw some error. So once you add it here, yeah, you would be able to authenticate from the logic app. So uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, yeah, uh, during uh, design time, you will not see any errors, even though the uh, permissions are not added. So but, uh, it will throw errors only during the runtime. So make sure to add these permissions uh, while creating the authentication. And for AD OAuth, yeah, you can click on AD OAuth here and provide these de details. Uh, you'd have to have an Active Directory app registration created. Yeah, you can go to app registrations here. So this is the one I already have. Uh, if you don't have already, you can go to app registrations and uh, create a new registration also and provide the uh, appropriate account type and click on register. And once you do that, uh, yeah, you'll have an app registration added. Uh, from this one, you can copy the client ID and the tenant ID. Uh, and uh, you can create either certificate or secret for the client credentials. So once you click on this, it will ask uh, for creating the client secret. You can create a new client secret and provide a description and expiry date. And once you add this, it will create the value here. Make uh, Please make uh, copy this value because it may not be available later. So as soon as you create it, uh, copy the value and uh, uh, keep it handy because that is required for adding it in the logic app. So now let's go back to launch cap. Yeah. This is the one. So we would have to provide the tenant ID, which we copied, and the certificate, uh, yeah, credential type as secret, table storage endpoint, table storage endpoint, which we already copied. For the Active Directory OAuth authentication to work, it is important that we add permission to this service principle at the storage account. To do that, um, yeah, in the storage account, you can go to access control blade. I can click on add and role assignment. Yeah, just like before, uh, yeah, I can choose the storage table data contributor. But instead of managed identity, we'll choose user group or service principal and then uh, select the service principal. Let me find the name. Yeah, this is the name. And yeah, once you're able to search the service principal, you can click on select and review and assign. Let's have a look at the different actions available for this uh, table storage connector. We go back to the logic app. Yeah, as of now, uh, table storage connector doesn't have any triggers available and it uh, has only the actions. Let me load them. Yeah, I should table storage. And uh, there are different uh, CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete operations on the uh, table and the entity level available. So yeah, these are the different actions. Um, let me click on query entities. Oh, query entities we already have. So going back to the create table, yeah, uh, yeah, as the name suggests, it will create the table based on the name you provide here. And you can even choose to uh, fail if the table already exists. And let's have a look at the create entity action. So you can either insert or update an entity. So once you click on this, you'll see a partition key and row key uh, fields populated. If you provide an existing row key, it will uh, update the entity. And if you provide a unique row key, it will create a new row. And you can add the key value pairs. You can add multiple key value pairs here. I can add something like a name and add something like ID. This needs to be a proper JSON, otherwise it might fail during uh, saving of the logic app itself. If you don't provide the row key or partition key, it might fail with a bad request error. Okay, this is about the insert or update. Another interesting uh, you know, action is a query entities. Uh, yeah, here you can query the table uh, 
for uh, with any filter so yeah this the table is the mandatory field and other fields are optional so you can choose filter or selected properties top or continuation token uh, filter yeah it is uh, it follows the link syntax so uh, any filter you provide in the link syntax would be taken so in this case i'm checking the column name and the value and if you see uh, here the selected properties you can have a look at the different uh, selected properties and um, this will uh, display only the properties which you choose like if i choose a uh, name as the column only the na name uh, would be displayed uh, you can choose any of the properties and the top is for uh, yeah uh, selecting the top uh, uh, the number of records to return and uh, yeah this query would return around 255 records if you would like to return more records uh, it, if there are more records in the table it would return a continuation token and you can use the continuation token in the next call to um, process the further um, records so let me show a run to see how this looks like So if you go to the storage account and storage browser, uh, yeah, these are the entities I have added. So now I have added a filter to uh, fetch all the records which has name as Divya. Let me go to the logic cap run and query entities. It would return all the rows which has the name as Divya. When storage account is behind firewall and in a different region than that of logic app, uh, we can whitelist the logic app outgoing IPs uh, to be able to access the storage account. But when storage account is in the same region as that of logic app and is behind the firewall, uh, local communication in the data center abstracts these internal IP addresses. So just permitting the traffic through IP addresses might not be enough. And in that case, we would have to use private endpoints and uh, these are the steps we would need to follow. We need to create a private endpoint uh, for the storage service. In our case, um, this is a table service. And we need to enable VNet integration on Logic App and add private endpoints subnet to the trusted list in uh, storage account network settings and uh, also add Logic App's subnet to the trusted list in storage accounts network settings. Let's see how this solution can be implemented. My logic app and a storage account both are in uh, East US location. So let's enable uh, VNet integration at logic app first. So for that, you can go to the networking tab of the logic app and you can click on VNet integration. Right now it is off and uh, yeah, it will give an option to add a VNet. If you already have a VNet, you can add from here. Otherwise, uh, you can create one too. And uh, it's quite uh, simple to create a VNet. And you can choose the VNet. This is the one I would like to use. And you need to have one subnet which is not delegated to any of the resources. So I'm choosing one of the subnets. And once you click on OK, it will uh, configure the VNet and delegate that subnet to Logic App Resource. So it might take some time. So let's go to storage account configuration. And yeah, this is the storage account. In storage account networking, yeah, earlier it had enabled from all networks. So right now I have uh, enabled it from selected virtual network. Um, yeah, let's see whether the logic app works now. So earlier it was working fine, right? So we can run this once. Since the firewall is enabled at uh, storage account, this logic app would fail with the error as forbidden. Let me show the error. Yeah, it's failing with a forbidden error uh, since logic app doesn't have uh, access to the storage account. So let's go back to storage account now. And uh, yeah, we have this enabled from selected virtual networks. We would have to configure a private endpoint. Let me go back to a private endpoint. You can click on private endpoint here and uh, provide the details like the name and the network interface name. And you can choose the resource which you would like to uh, add. Like in this case, 
it is table and select the virtual network it will load the virtual networks that are present in that region so right now i chose a different region and which doesn't have the vnets created so let me choose a right region so it's east us so once i choose that i'll be able to load the virtual networks here and the subnet one empty subnet which is not associated with any uh, service and yeah you can create uh, the private dns zone for this and click on next and create so i already have a private endpoint created so this is the one and uh, yeah you can click on this to get more details about this private endpoint so now i have a private endpoint and now i have a vnet integrated logic app as well but these two resources are in different vnets like my logic app is in a different vnet and my storage account is in a different vnet and that's the reason we would like have to add the virtual network here in the accepted list so you can go here and choose the uh, uh, vnet where private endpoint is present this is the one and choose the subnet also we would have to add the uh, subnet of the uh, logic app as well so this is the vnet where logic app is integrated so i'll add the subnet these are some configurations which can be modified through app setting for table storage connector it is not recommended to modify them unless really required and uh, better to test the performance if you are increasing any of the limits uh, aad token audience by default uh, the ad authentication would take the table service endpoint as the audience for the authentication uh, but in case you are using custom domain for storage account you can uh, provide the audience here through this app setting and uh, the least table uh, results is limited to 1000 and uh, you can modify it through the app settings and a query entity results limit uh, is set to 255 you can either use con um, pagination through continuation token or modify the settings here and a uh, client cache size is set at 64 and client cache size multiplier by default it is set to the processor count and these two can also be modified through app settings these are some of the common error codes you might come across in case of 401 unauthorized error uh, for connection string authentication uh, verify if the key rotation is performed at the storage account in that case you might have to replace the uh, connection string with the new one uh, for managed identity or ad auth make sure the proper rbac access is provided at the storage account for this managed identity or the uh, ad service principal and 403 forbidden error is thrown if the storage account is behind firewall in that case make sure that the private endpoint is configured for table endpoint and logic apps vnet and private endpoints vnet are added to the allowed vnet list and 400 bad request uh, could be thrown uh, especially in case of uh, adding or updating an entity uh, if the partition key or the row key is empty make sure that these two values are provided While using Azure AD authentication, if you are seeing any uh, authentication related errors like 401 errors, uh, you can test this from uh, Postman as well outside of the uh, logic app. Uh, for doing that, yeah, we can use the uh, you know get call to get the OAuth token. Uh, yeah, you should have the uh, content type as URL encoded and in the body you can pass the client secret resource and client ID. Once you pass this, you will receive an access token. You can use this access token in another call to call the uh, table endpoint. Yeah, I'm using the access token here as an authorization header with the bearer token added. So with this, if you are seeing the issue with from Postman as well, there could be a possibility that the uh, proper authentication is not added to the uh, Azure AD uh, service principle. This is all I have for the demo today and thank you for watching.